All right, so it's your boy, Coach Vic, Certified Land Investor. Glad to be here with you. Today is January 11, 2023. Today, I'm going to talk to you about how to pick an area to invest in for fast ROI. This is a topic that I like to bring up a lot because a lot of people ask me about it. Like, there's a lot of people who always jump in. They want to get into land investing. I'm like, well, how do I get started? How do I find an area? What do I do? And... Every time I talk about this, I always find something new to kind of share or maybe a way to make something a little bit more clear, maybe something new that I've learned recently. And I'm like, oh, OK, well, you know, now that I've done it for so many times, I can. there's certain things I will cut out and there's other things that I, I would do uh, beforehand. Um, but as always, make sure you can hear me and see me OK. Just want to make sure we're all good. Um, but this one's going to be maybe short. We'll see. But we're going to jump right into it. So, um, quick story, quick story. So, story about a young man. He um, was looking to um, invest in land. And he heard about how great it is. And he was like, you know what? This seems better than the other real estate options. And I don't need to have a ton of money. And I can get started with just what I have and learn a lot about real estate in the process. It seems like a no-brainer. I should jump in. So as he's learning the tricks of the trade, he sees like a very common list of hot counties to, you know, basically invest his money in. And so he's like, all right, well, this is the list. Everybody seems to agree on it. Let me, let me go ahead and do that. Let me jump in with that. So he randomly picks a place from that list and he puts an offer letter together. He sends out a bunch of odd mails out there and eventually he does get an offer. Now, he was happy that that work had paid off. But then after he acquired the property, he tried to sell it and nobody seemed to be interested. So he's like, well, maybe I just don't know what I'm doing. Maybe I'm just not doing it right. Maybe, you know, the million other things. So he tries to put it on Craigslist. He tries it on Facebook Marketplace. He tries in all these places. And while there's some interest, not enough genuine interest to actually sell the property. Now, eventually, he lowered the price and he tried a bunch of different things. And, you know, eventually he did sell the property, but it was a lot more work than he anticipated. And he realized not only did he need to learn more selling secrets, which may or may not have been true, but he saw that other people who were selling properties in the same area had the same problems. However, some of the big guys selling nicer properties and they'll sold much faster, even though they were a lot more expensive. So if you can't tell this person is me, obviously, um, I've learned that all land sales, and I, I'll say that time and time again, but then something that I've been adding to that saying is that it just may not sell on your time frame, Meaning just because you want to sell within a month, two months, it may not happen if you don't do what I'm about to share with you, all right? Now, this is common. This is very common for people to buy a desert square and wondering why no one's buying it or like they have to sell it for 99 down, 99 a month. You know, some really, really stupid terms that don't mean nothing to nobody. Yes, it will sell and there will be somebody who will buy it for 99 down, 99 a month. But I mean, let's keep it real. What are you going to do with that, right? A hundred bucks a month. If you want to do anything, I mean, you got to sell a ton of property. Now, it is a strategy. And I know a lot of people like to use that strategy. And if you do have something for so cheap, it's very easy to get a lot of people involved. But I don't want to do that. And I'm pretty sure you don't either. That's not fast ROI, not in the least. Now, if I have 50, 100 properties and I also, you know, it's a good monthly income, but I don't have 50, 100 properties. I don't want to wait that long. I want the money now because I got bills to pay this month, not after I acquire 50 or 100 properties, however long that takes. All right. So with that said, instead of going for these wimpy payments, let's get into the meat of the of this. Um, what is this on my screen? Okay. Before we get into it, let me give you some ground rules, okay? The first thing is first. If you're going to be in this land investing game, you got to commit to the process. There's a lot of people who want the reward without putting in the work. Now, sometimes the work is the stuff that you expect, right? Doing the research, putting a list together, contacting people. Yeah, I get it. But sometimes the work is just getting the capital to get into business. Maybe that means picking up extra hours at your regular job. Maybe it's picking up a side hustle. 
or like, you know, Uber or DoorDash or something like that. Maybe it's getting a regular second job that's part time, right? Who knows whatever it is, but you're going to have to put in work. And again, most times it isn't the, well, I'm not going to say that because it could be the land work or it could be just getting the capital so you can actually make some, do some damage, right? Now, something else to consider. A lot of us will suck at the, uh, when we first get started. Like when was the last time you tried something new and you were good at it right away? It's, it doesn't happen. It's just human nature. Sure, every now and then you might have a natural knack for something, just you know, for the hell of it. Maybe it's something similar to you've done before, whatever. But in general, when you're learning a high income skill like land investing, it's going to take you time to learn it. That means you're going to suck. And you got to embrace that suck. And it's okay. Don't feel bad. As long as you keep going, eventually you will get it. And it won't take as long as you think. It just feels like that when things seem to be moving very slow. And let's be honest, real estate and land is slow. You know, it's not like, you know, your, your drug dealing where, you know, you got, you know, crackheads coming on the corner all the time, you know, things take time. They take time. So be patient with that process. Now, the good thing is you don't got to be super good to start making money. You just got to be good enough. And again, to be good enough, just don't quit. Just don't quit. Just stick with it. Trust the process. Things will be all right. Next, stay consistent. If you do that, you will land a deal, right? Now, if you follow me and you do what I do, like my students, they often get their deals within the first 30 days, but that's only if they follow what I do. When we find excuses and like, oh, well, we I didn't have this set up or this thing got in the way or something like that, then obviously that it prolongs the that deal finding process. Um, but that first 30 days often includes having a county that they've researched on their own and it just didn't work out. Maybe the price range was out of their um, budget. You know, they didn't realize it until it was a little too late. Maybe everything looked okay on paper, but just the timing of it all, they started sending out offers and just people who owned the property wasn't there. It just, it happens. It happens all the time. However, after that first uh, dud area, and then they, re they find a new area and they try to process again, they, you know, they've learned some things from making those first mistakes and they've like picked a better area. They know kind of what to say. They know how much effort they need to put into it to get those offers and boom. They get some they get some deals going. All right. Now, another another ground rule, the more you contact people, the higher your rate of success. It really is a numbers game, people. Now, when you're doing bigger deals and you're hunting for something in particular, now it's less about numbers. It's more about how can I strategically put myself in front of this owner? But when you're first getting started, just talk to everybody who has property that fulfills a certain criteria. We'll talk about that more in a second. Now, with that said, I want to reemphasize never giving up because I understand how hard things can get. It's very easy to get discouraged when nobody's responding to you. It's very easy to get discouraged when everybody is, I'm not going to say everybody, but you get a couple of people who have some bad attitudes and they're trying to swear at you or, you know, call you out of your name or, you know, just something that's just not pleasant. It could be very discouraging, like if you are getting people responding, but they're all just saying no. And you're like, damn. Or like they're saying, yeah, but the price that they want is way over than what, what you have. And you have no way to figure out how do I pay for that? Hell, let alone if it's even a good deal, right? I understand that. I understand how tough life can be. Things outside of land can come and take, you know, take a hold. Just, you can't, you cannot stop. You just got to figure out a way. Even if you only work for 10 minutes a day, right? You can only get caught offers out for 10 minutes if you're doing an SMS campaign or you're slowly building a list to mail. It's better than zero minutes. I promise you it will all pay off. Now, again, this is half the reason why I highly encourage coaching because you need somebody that's going to help you in those times of need. Now, it doesn't got to be me. Obviously, I'm going to say I'm the best, but I'm biased. But you need somebody in your corner that understands the game that's going to calm you down when you start to get all antsy. You're going to need some other people who are also in the game that who can kind of guide you and you guys can learn from each other because that's how we learn like think about the things that you learned well at your job or at school or for your own hobbies yes you can pick up a book and do things on your own but it's not until you really get out there and you start talking to other people you start networking you start learning from people who've been there done that is when the real acceleration of that like skill and knowledge takes place so just, just don't give up i just, i cannot stress that enough now 
Let me add this too, because this is something else I think is very important. I used to say 2,500, but now I'm going to say 3,500. 3,500 should be around your starting budget. If you have less than $3,500, figure out a way to make that money. Now, don't get me wrong. You definitely can get started with, with less. But to do that, you are going to need a lot more skill. And if you're just getting started, you're not going to have that skill. And if you're trying to get started with less and you don't have the skill, it's easier to burn yourself out or give up because nothing's happening or things aren't working out the way you expect. But you have 3,500, not only do you have enough money to buy the property, you got money to get tools, you got good money to get mailers, you got money to get a business phone line. I'm not talking about a regular business phone line, just like something you can send mass texts out. You have the, the, and you're not like sweating over every little thing. So 3,500 is my minimum these days, not just because you, obviously you can buy a property for 300 bucks. I do it all the time, but it's so when you're learning, you have room for mistakes. So 3,500 bucks shouldn't be your rent money or food money. It should be money inside, uh, set aside for investing. That investment could be in land and yourself. All right. I wanted to make sure we were clear on that. Now let's actually get into it. Um, the first thing you need to do is make sure you have that 3,500, that starting budget. It's very important because of the things I just mentioned. Um, if you buy a property for about three, 400 bucks, you're probably going to be selling for about 2,000. It's a good ROI, but it's not necessarily going to be the thing that's going to make you excited. Um, it might, it might. However, you buy something for 1,500, 2,000 bucks and you sell for 6,000, 7,000 bucks, that's the difference. For a lot of people, that's their month. That's more than their monthly income. And that's just one deal. So having that amount, right, that budget there is good. Now, again, if you don't have the 3,500, what I suggest, again, you can start for less. But just know what your budget is, all right? So before you even look at a map, understand how much you have to invest and keep it real. Don't say, well, I can, if I, no. Have it ready, ready to go. Because you never know when that deal is going to come. Now, um, next. That budget will dictate your target income. However, sometimes you need more than what you have available, which will you will multiply two, three, four times in, uh, uh, in income needs. So, so what I mean by that, let's just say you have the 3,500, you buy something for 2,000 bucks, right? You don't need to spend your whole budget on one property. You buy for 2,000 and you can sell that property for 6,000. But let's say you need 10. Well, understanding you need 10,000 and that will kind of help you dictate what areas that you're going to look for. Because just because you can buy something cheap doesn't mean you can sell it for what you want. So that, that's starting to make sense. So again, you want to know how much you have to start with. Then you want to know how much you're going to need as in like, what's the end game? Now your ending budget or ending, but your, your, um, your target income could be like a million bucks. Okay, great, right? Obviously, you know, you're not going to get that in one deal, especially if you're starting with a low amount, but you can figure out a way and a path forward to make that happen. That's why you want to have your target because that's what else going to dictate where you start to invest. So far, so good. All right. Perfect. 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 Next, if you're looking to do more or you have a built in network of like other land investors or just real estate investors or just people who are looking for real estate you might want to consider double closing. That too will also dictate where you invest because now you're also looking for, instead of what you can do with your own capital, you're looking to say, okay, I have a buyer ready to go. We're going to work together on this. This person likes property in this area. Therefore, that's where I'm going to limit my search. So to, to recap, before you do anything, how much do you have to invest right now? How much do you want to make? And are you doing some kind of work with some kind of partnership or double closing? These three things are definitely going to help you figure out what area to invest in. All right. Now, if these are not aligned, you're going to struggle. You're going to flounder. It's going to be very tough for you. So you got to make sure you guys, you're doing what you need to do to make things happen. Now, with that said, let's say we have that ready. We have our money ready. We have our target income we're not necessarily working with anybody else. So we're just working with us. So we're, we're not limited anywhere in the country. What I will ask you to do is start preferably next to a growth market. Now, how do you pick a growth market? Um, well, again, depends on your budget, right? But generally speaking, look at places with jo uh, strong job growth, 
maybe increasing populations, maybe rising rents. Um, usually rising rents is really good because that's sometimes people are looking to get out of those rental places and want to get their own. Sometimes, you know, you could look at like, uh, I said population growth already, um, just the natural beauty of the area, you know, because it's not necessarily just about like how many people live in the area. It's also about, do you have a hidden gym? And a hidden gym is basically beauty in the eye of the beholder. For example, there's one county in Texas that no one's ever heard of. It's a very, very tiny county, but it's I've been constantly in it for the last almost three, three years at this point because it's a hidden gem and the fact that the people in the area like the land there. So as soon as I buy something there, it sells relatively quickly. Another time, do you want to have something in a place that, again, um, in a growth market? It just depends on what you're doing. Now, what else you're going to do after you're looking at um, preferably a growth market? If it's not a growth market, think about a place where you're near like a major metro area. So that way people kind of have a vague familiarity with the, the, the region. Or if it's not a major metro area, think about natural landmarks and things like that. So my favorite example is like, obviously you can think about the Dallas area. So I'm not talking about investing in Dallas in particular, but think about the county surrounding Dallas, right? And this can go, you know, as long as like a three hour drive outside of Dallas, it's fair game. Obviously the closer to Dallas, Texas you get, the more expensive the property will be. But it's also going to be more highly sought after. So it just depends on the game that you're playing. Now, if you don't want to do something like a major, major metro area like Dallas, Texas, for example, think of my other favorite example. Think of the Grand Canyon and where that's located, right? That's not a major metro area, but everybody knows about the, where the Grand Canyon is, generally speaking, especially if they're looking for land in that area. So having land in that general vicinity it's going to have people something that people are going to understand. They're going to like. They're going to be like, okay, I love going to the Grand Canyon. I want to place a camp on it or build a cabin on it or just hold land there because who knows what's going to happen in the future. And it's a good investment for me as this buyer. So again, something major that people can kind of latch on to and they understand. Now, what if you, you know, you do like, okay, well, I can understand. I can major, major, major metro area or, you know, a landmark or something. How do we pick? Well, what I like to do, and I tell a lot of my students, if you have no clue, Think about where you've been on vacation here in the great U.S. and think about some places that just look really nice, right? That will give you a good starting point. Like think about the different states you visited, where your family lives, things like that. And a lot of times people want to use those areas because they have some familiarity with it and it helps them feel confident about any, you know, any list that they put together and any offer that they put out there. Now, if you don't have anything like that, just pick a random number between one and 48. One and 48 will... Um, once you do that, you pick a random number that will correspond to what state that um, I guess, when did that state join the union? So like the 31st state, I believe, was it California? Will be California, like, you know, so all you got to do is like, hey, what would the 15th state in the U.S.? And then Google will tell you, right? And that will give you a good starting point. And then once you pick that state, then you can pick, okay, where the where's the capital? What's the major landmarks here? Where am I going to find, you know, some areas that people like? Or I can see this is a lot of vacant land here. Looks like a lot of stuff that people would want. Maybe I'll start my search there. All right, so far so good? Great. Now, once you pick that area, now it's time to see how well does your area that you've picked fit your budget. So if we go back to the Dallas example, if I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go around Dallas, Dallas Texas, if I only have like, you know, 700 bucks, well, obviously, that's not going to support your budget. The land there is going to be too expensive. How do you know that? Well, you use your favorite websites like Zillow or Redfin or Landwatch and even sometimes Craigslist and actually type in vacant land. You don't have to type in vacant land. You just type in the area and just make sure you, uh, you're you only searching for vacant land. And you'll see what's on the market currently. You can also see what's for sale. And you'll see what's going on there. And once you do that, you can kind of get an idea like, all right, if properties are selling for this price, that means I must acquire it for a quarter or half of that price. Let me give you an example. Let's just say for the sake of argument, you see properties have sold in the area you've chosen for $20,000 uh, for every like half acre or every acre, whatever it, whatever it is, right? You see 20,000 and 19 and 22 and 
18 and 27, right? It, it just averages out to roughly $20,000 per acre, right? Well, if I'm a sell for about $20,000 per acre, I mean, I must acquire for about 5,000, 8,000 per acre. So I need to buy for 5,000 or roughly around that range. It's going to be a little bit higher if I said 5,000 or 8,000. So I can sell for 20. Again, buy for five, a quarter of the value, sell for what everybody else is selling for 20 or what it's sold for. Basically, the people are telling what the value is. This is a, basically how we make so much money in this business because every investment is guaranteed, um, practically guaranteed to double, triple, quadruple your initial investment, you know, not including the different little odds and ends you got to pay for to make the deal happen. All right. So going back to our example, we see our property selling for $20,000 an acre in an area that we randomly picked. We only have 700 bucks. If I'm like, all right, well, property, I mean, that should be a quiet price for 5,000, but I only have 700 bucks. That means you need to pick a new area. It doesn't support your budget, right? So another way you can look at it, you can go backwards. Meaning, all right, if I have 700, that means multiply that by three or four, I should be getting property for 20 or selling it for about 3,000 bucks, roughly. Where's property that is selling for $3,000? Where can I find that, right? So it's a different approach than actually finding a growth market, but it's kind of the same thing because if you do find an area where you find a property sell for three, 4,000 bucks, maybe five, you still got to go through the checks. Is it close to a growth market? Um, is it... Um, Next is something desirable, things like that. That's just, just basic stuff. And if you find that out and then it's still good, great. Now you can start building a list. Um, once you start to build a list, so, you know, you know everybody's going to want to deal with you. You want to segment that list in certain ways, but, you know, that's a little beyond the topic of just finding an, an area for fast ROI. Now, here's the thing. After you find an area, and let's say everything matches. It's next to a growth market. So you know people are going to want the property once you acquire something. Let's say the acquisition prices are within your budget, right? You're excited about that. Let's say um, there's enough sales and, and activity, which is something I should have mentioned, to let you know like, hey, this place is popular. People do want land here currently, right? Let's say all those passes, passes the sniff test. The next test you got to do is check with those that county's websites and see how easy are they to use. Because you're gonna to have to look up the owners. You're gonna to have to look up where the land is. You're gonna to have to ask the county questions. You got to find different things like, hey, if I do buy a property here, and please don't do this until you buy a property, how do I get power? How do I get water? How do I get this? How do I get that? What's the building restrictions? What do they like? What do they don't? You have to find that out. And if it's tough to get that information, it may not be worth working there working in that county. There's so many, it's like over 3,000 counties. You don't got to get stuck on one, right? There's going to be many places that's going to support your budget. Now, here's the thing too. We're not looking countywide for these areas. Most of the places that we're looking for are cities, towns, and if you really can, subdivisions, right? We want to be very granular when possible. But again, that's all within the, um, you'll still have to look up the information within the county. And again, if the county doesn't give you or make things easy for you to do the work that you need to get done, maybe it's not a good county for you to use, all right? So when you put that all together, you're looking at growth market, there's sales activity, and how you know, again, Zillow, Landwatch, and all that, you'll check the comps. Um, you're within the, your acquisition price was in the budget that you have, um, and yeah, I think that was it. Um, you found an area. Now, obviously, you don't really know how well it's going to do until you actually start putting out offers. So I highly recommend that you put a list together quickly and cheaply as possible and just start contacting people and just see if you actually, your first research did the job. Because it's fun to research. It's fun to speculate. It's fun to be on your phone when you're watching TV and scrolling through Zillow. Like, oh, this area is pretty good. Let me, let me jot that down. But you don't make money doing that. You make money by acquiring nice assets for crappy prices. Now, that's the only way you're going to make money. Now, if you need help with this, or let's say you have an area, but you need help building a list, you need to hit me up. It's what I do, people. 
I'm good at doing the research. I'm good at helping people do their thing. That's why everybody who talks to me um, and end up joining my coaching program, they actually get hands-on guidance. So obviously they're going to learn how to do it themselves, but in the short term, they have me to kind of hold their hand through the process if necessary. Not everybody needs that. So as always, people, make sure you're doing the work. Please don't give up. I went to a long spiel about not giving up. I understand how tough it can be to keep with it, but I promise it, it is worth it. The high income skills that you can learn using this land investing stuff will be transferable. And even if you do nothing but just buy and sell land, you're going to make a lot of money if you do it properly. Cool. All right. I think that's it. Short one today. I want to make sure we get it straight to the point. But this is Coach Vic signing off. Glad to uh, have given some information. If you have any questions, make sure you hit me up. I didn't check any responses as I was going because I was just kind of going. Uh, but yeah, make sure you uh, hit me up. And again, if you need some, some help coaching, you guys know what to do. Send me a DM, reply to the comments, say something. I will see it. I will make sure we uh, start that communication and things are a good fit. I could be helping you make some money. All right. Peace.